Hello there. Happy Monday. I am coming to you live from my library in Lakeview, Chicago. Um, we are doing a live interview today at noon instead of 3 p.m. Uh, with the wonderful Alan Tager. Um, Alan has been with us at the gallery for, um, gosh, it's been about six, seven years now. Uh, they've, um, Chris and Laura have been doing art festivals with Alan for years and we're finally able to um, bring him onto the gallery. Since then, he's been a part of our uh, fantastic crew of in-house artists. We've done one solo show for him, which was my personal um, first time meeting Alan. He um, is uh, one of the most uh, personable artists I think I've ever um, met with. He is definitely somebody who you can just walk right up to and, and start talking start talking to about their art. Um, so before we dive in today, because um, I am uh, waiting for him to come on to the video, um, I'm going to show you the piece that I have here at my home. Uh, to keep things simple, I took it off the wall and I have it right here. So I wanted to show this beauty off um, without getting too much of a glare. This is why you get museum glass, everybody. Um, so yeah, this is my piece from Alan Tager. Um, I am a particular fan of this piece because it does feature a painter. Um, the painter is painting on uh, the breast of this woman. And uh, this piece means a lot to me um, just because I am a painter myself. I connect quite a bit with Alan's work. Um, hello everybody coming on. Looks like Alan has signed on, so we'll get him on here in just a second. But I do connect quite a bit with Alan's work, and um, I've always gravitated towards his, his pieces in the gallery. And uh, so let's go ahead and get started with this guy. Let me get him on here. Um, here we go. All right, let's see about getting Alan on here. Um, hey, Alan. How Hi. are you? Welcome. Thank you. How are you doing today? Very good. And you? Oh, fantastic. Um, it's a lot warmer today than it was yesterday when we chatted. Um, it's uh, 65 degrees. That's uh, that's very warm for us right now. Yeah. So, so uh, <laughs> I just went outside uh, for a little bit. Actually around 65 here, but it's cool for a year. So. Yeah, that is cool for, for where you are. Well, why don't you go ahead and tell us where you are exactly, so all of our viewers okay. can know that. Okay, I'm in my <laughs> studio, uh, my home studio, where I do matting, framing, shipping, things like that. Um, my shooting studio is in town, and I haven't been there for about seven weeks now, I guess. It's something like that since we've been, uh, you know, hunkered down, um, which is sort of strange because um, one of the things I'd love to be doing now is to do my art but I can't work with models right now so right. I'm doing other things in the business um, so I can show you around here and I can show you some of my new work and give you an idea what's been going on um, let me see boom button here let me see that yeah okay this is um, is that coming out okay can you see yes uh, yes mm -hmm framing studio was originally the garage and uh, this is where I've got all my framing equipment and um, where the sort of the nerve center of the business uh, I don't sh I tried shooting here once I tripped over everything there wasn't enough room so I didn't do that again yeah uh, I can show you some some things some odds and ends on the wall here there's some really interesting stuff that you don't really get to see very often this is something I did God, it must be 40 years ago. It's called Seven Views of Mount Fuji. These are, there's an old series of woodcuts called 36 Views of Mount Fuji by Hokusai, a Japanese woodcut artist. Very famous with a big wave picture that people know about. So I did sort of a parody on that using the breast as Mount Fuji. And I mounted them on a piece of uh, 
burlap and made a, a scroll similar to the kind of things that they used to do in Japan. Um, there's only, I only made a few of these. There, there's only two of them actually uh, that I still have. Um, that was shown originally at a gallery that did um, Asian art and they were very embarrassed because they didn't realize when they booked the show that I, my pictures involved nudes. Oh. So, <laughs> we got there and they didn't want to say anything. So uh, they mounted the show anyway, but I'm sure they were not really comfortable with it. <laughs> well, that and, the show, yeah. your work is to, um, to, to just view as a landscape, you know, it's, it's something that so many people pass and don't register that it's the the human body um which is just fascinating <laughs> those are glorious alan those are it's, really cool it's fun when people suddenly realize what they're looking at mm -hmm. um, i've done other i can show you some other odds and ends here in the studio some things you don't normally see and <clears throat> this is a hand colored black and white photograph this is not a bodyscape this is a picture of an old oil tank with uh stairway the colors are added with oil paint it's actually a one of a kind from when i was shooting with film there's a the negative with a hole punched in it showing that it's in fact the only print it's one of one i actually did that with bodyscapes too for a while i shot um on film for many years and then just sort of at the end of using film i did some one of a kinds and here's a picture with again the negative at the bottom and the hole punched in the negative, and that's a uh, one of a kind. Wow. Um, so those are still available. Um, I haven't shown them for a while. Um, let's see what else is around here. Um, this was a series I did of bodyscapes using little miniature fruits. They were uh, not real fruit, but um, I think I called this uh, peaches and plums or something like that. Uh, I like Ooh, looks like we may have for a second. Let's, uh, Alan. Yes, that is a but. Um, okay. Yes, that is. <laughs> we have a question coming in. Is that a but? Yes. Yes, uh, yes, yes it is a but. <laughs> yep, these are little toys, <laughs> little model railroad figurines, They're little horse and riders about an, maybe an inch tall. And uh, it's set right mm -hmm. on the model's body. It's a single shot. It's not done with Photoshop. I did this stuff with film for 35 years, 40 years almost, before I switched to digital. But these are all done as individual shots. And even now when I'm using a digital uh, capture, it's still, a one of, it's still done as the one shot. The little toy is actually on the model's body. It's not done with Photoshop. This was the original idea that started the whole thing, a skier on a breast. Oh. Uh, that was the first idea that I had. And um, I actually couldn't start that way because the model said, let's start where I don't have to take my clothes off and um, I can see what you're doing. So we started with a little figurine sitting on her fingertip and mm -hmm. then climbers on her nose and then fishing in her belly button. And then when I got those prints, I could show it to perspective models and they could see that what I was doing was actually much saner than it sounded when I said, oh, I'm going to put these toys on your body and take a picture. And it really made no sense to them. But once they saw the pictures, then they got the idea and it was easy to get models. So that was the first idea. Here was a one with um, belly button. This yeah. was used as a um, poster for the Uptown Art Festival in Minneapolis about 10 oh. years ago, I guess. Cool. They were so proud that they were using a nude, even though it was just a belly button. It was a big deal to use a nude for a show poster. I'm sure it was. Whoops. Ah, okay, here's one more I have pulled out for you. Ooh, wine tasting. This, this is a Love really that one. popular piece. Mm -hmm. So based on my trips to California wine country. Um, they're little, again, model railroad figurines set right on the body. So if you've, if you've been to the gallery, you've seen my work, and um, they're fun. So I hope you get a chance to 
you know, uh, get back there again eventually when the world opens up. Until now, of course, you can order online. Oh, yeah. Um, we can all still order. One of the best parts about art, the art world these days is um, we, uh, we have web, or I'm sorry, we have the internet at our um, fingertips and, and to be able to talk to artists this way over social media is very helpful um, putting all of our art. So, um, well, in, in terms of, um, let me see if there are any questions that have come um let's see here i think i saw one right at the beginning uh lizzie uh that piece that i have is in uh my bathroom which is a very uh wonderful place to put it. um it's definitely a place where i can look at it often and i know quite a few people who have put their bodyscape bathrooms i think uh chris and laura also have quite um i think three in their bathroom as well um, Paul, yes. So Alan does not use Photoshop. Uh, he has not. I believe you were saying Alan, that you were using Photoshop for your Zodiac series, but you hadn't used it for anything else. Yeah, that was that uh, series. I did use it for that to add um, a different kind of sky and stars and so forth. It was a very a special series. But in general, the bodyscapes are not done with Photoshop. I use digital capture now, but the digital prints, they're, they're shot just the same way as I did with film. I put the toy on the body and shoot a picture. That's it. Does that, um, how, how long, so when we, when we talk about um, models in the past, um, a lot of people love to, to throw out um, Lucian Freud, his relationships with his models and how long they had to pose um, how often, I mean, how long usually is your model posing and how still? Because he says, very still model. You know, I've always been kind of curious about that. Um, I know you have your magician secrets and such with uh, probably some things that you um, help keep them on the body. But I was a little curious about that as well. Oh, there, there's no secrets. It's really pretty simple. The model lays on the table. Um, the little toys are set on her body, sometimes with a little Elmer's glue to keep mm -hmm. them from falling. It washes off real quickly, so it's no big deal. Um, sometimes a little wire coming out the back of the miniature to steady it a little bit. The shoot, the session, I usually shoot for about three hours. After that, I'm pretty burned out. But the yeah. actual um, time for each setup could be 10, 15 minutes, or it could be maybe an hour. Mostly the problem is the toys keep falling and they, they fall off and I've got to put them back on and you know, adjust the lights and so forth. So each, each image may be a, a half hour to maybe an hour um, until I get something that I'm happy with. And then sometimes I have to come back and redo it. So if I get two or three yeah. different setups shot in one day, that's in that three hour period, that's great. And um, if I get one good shot out of the whole session, I'm very pleased. Fantastic, cool. Well, we do have another question in here for um, Jess and Dave are my neighbors, uh, and they are tuning in today. So she was asking, do you have a favorite piece? I'm sorry, I, I, you're breaking up. I can get what you said. Um, do you have a favorite piece, a particular bodyscape that is your favorite? Huh, I guess, um, I don't have one here to show you. What is the the dolphins? It's it's with two models lying next to each other and three or four dolphins in the water with a um, lighthouse in the background. Um, uh -huh. You have it at the studio or at the gallery and on your website, but I don't I'm have one way handy. I don't no, I don't think I have one right now to show you. Well, let me okay, take, I'm... I might I might have. Let me take a look here. I'll show. Is It'll be a race story. to find it, Alan. This is this is the. Is it the, the one that has? <laughs> In these boxes somewhere, there might be a dolphin. Let's see. Is it this one, Alan? Let me see if I've got one. Uh... I believe this is the one. Is it not, Alan? Yes. You've got it. Okay. Perfect. 
Excellent. Yeah. There that's we go. Won a number of awards, and that's been my favorite. Uh, you can look at that and really not. Uh, um, also, let me show you some other odds and ends. I've been doing something new. Um, these are called body stocking scapes. Let's see if I can try to get the reflection mm. minimized. Now, what you've got here is a body that's wearing a body stocking. So, it's so cool. You see the shape of the body, but it, there's no skin shown. Right. Um, which is interesting because I really have to make the body shape tell the story because there's no details like hair or nipples or anything of that sort. There's no skin texture. There's just the shape of the body. And then there, I'm shooting in color because the color of the body stocking is uh, appropriate for the color of the landscape, like the purpley blue for the ocean and the white for um, skiing. And here's, here's green for the golf. Mm -hmm. The, the clouds are a, picture, a photograph, a big print of clouds that they use for a background in model railroads. That is so neat. So that's a new project that hasn't really been shown yet. Um, they're, um, you know, really new, but I guess you have some of those on your, um, on your website or in your uh, well, we media. We don't have them on the website just yet. However, if anybody is interested in them, please um, don't hesitate to reach out to us um, uh, via email or phone call. Uh, but we were we were hoping to debut those in our next group exhibition, which unfortunately got put on hold uh, because of um, the coronavirus. So that exhibit's called Scapes, and it's about all different types of scapes. But we are going to be featuring uh, at the very least, one to two of those people today on our social media. Um, but uh, if anybody wants to see any more of those, I'm, I'm sure we could send them along. Is that okay with you, Alan? Yeah, sure. Whatever you'd like to do. There's some other stuff I have here to show you. Um, there, at Perfect. The gallery, there's a series of colored photographs, black and white photos painted with oil of diners. And this is one that I happen to have here. I'm not sure if you've got this particular one in your collection there or not. Uh, oh, these are black and white with oil paint right on top of it, the way they used to do photographs before color film was invented. So this is an old technique before computers, before digital, before color film back in the 1920s, 1930s, all the pictures with the rosy cheeks and so forth, that was hand colored. So that's what this is. And I know you've got a whole series of those from our show that we did uh, a few years awesome. ago. Yeah. Yeah, that was a fun show. Um, so Alan, can you tell us about when, when you were doing this series and, um, and why, did you, why did you end the series? I was shooting um, funky Americana, things that were vanishing. Um, old diners, mm -hmm. old amusement parks, old food, food stands, things from the 30s, 40s, 50s. And I was shooting that in the 80s, I guess 80s and 90s. And then I realized it was gone. I couldn't find anything like that anymore. It was either redone and it, it didn't have the authentic feel anymore or it was torn down. So, okay. um, you know, I just said, okay, I guess it's time to, to stop. I've got a huge collection of black and white images of vanishing Americana, uh, mostly 40s and 50s kind of stuff. Okay. Um, which, which I really loved. It was like a, a um, it was a scavenger hunt. I'd get off the highway, take the small roads when I was driving to art shows and so forth. And I just poke around the little towns and, and country roads and just find all this neat stuff. And now I, I may look around in those kind of roads. I don't see it anymore. It, it's mostly gone. Yeah. So maybe someday I'll put together a book of that work. I was also shooting in Europe at that time with um, banishing things, the, the old villages and the, the old farms and so forth, uh, cafes, things of that sort. And the hand coloring gave a special kind of look to it, it was sort of um, a, a, the color of the memories uh, rather than uh, the actual color, it's, it's feeling. 
yeah it's like a it's a sense of a, a feeling and memory that's definitely how i feel when when looking at them um they're beautiful photographs i when we had them up i stared at them like i just couldn't stop um well i'm going to take a short break here and show everybody everything on our website uh we do have a few more questions that i'd like but for now i wanted to let everybody know that um let me switch this thing around there we go so today's feature alan tager um to everybody who has tuned in since we started this is alan um, you can go onto our website, which is at uh, j2gallery.com and receive 20% off all of his paper prints for the Bodyscapes collection. All you have to do is use the promo code ALLEN in all caps. So if you want to go ahead and check out our website, that's, as I said, j2gallery.com. You can click on this lovely bit right up here and that'll take you to all of the discounts we have right now for our in-house artists. To go ahead and learn more about those artists, go ahead and click on the artist button. You can scroll and see everybody. We're gonna go ahead and click on Alan. From here, you can read a little bit about him or a lot about him. <laughs> We've got a long bio for you, Alan. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and click here. And from here, you can check out all of the different things that we have for Alan Taker. So the Bodyscapes photographs are where you're gonna get your 20% off. If you'd like to see the hand painted photographs that we have in the gallery, you can click on this. And if you'd like to see what we have on aluminum, you can click here. Additionally, if you'd like to know if you can get these prints on, on aluminum, you absolutely can. Just go ahead and inquire with us. If you'd like to see this pricing structure, just go ahead and click on the other aluminum pieces and you can see all that info. But if I'm not correct, if I am correct, Alan, you offer all of your on aluminum now, is that correct? All of your current work? Yes, anything can be ordered on aluminum. Okay, and it's an addition of 50, right? I'm sorry, you're breaking up. I missed what you said. Is it an addition of 15? Yes, the aluminum, everything, the aluminum edition is 15. Fantastic. Okay, cool. All right, Alan. So we did have a few questions that came up. Uh, Lizzie was asking, do you always work with the same model or do you have other models that you use? I usually have three or four models that I'm working with at any time period, but over the years, people come and go and I've used many, many different models. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to figure out now which among my various models have kept social distancing so I can actually work with them again. It's time to do some new work, but uh, we may have to wait a little while. Yeah. I'm interested to see how that could come into play within the subject matter. Um, I know you have your, your other line of work back, utilizing uh, the miniatures, but not the model. Um, this line work is a lot more conceptual and um, uh, in my mind it's linked to more of the um, the um, psycho uh, psychology background. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about the series? Yeah, I, uh, I had collected a huge number of minutes. Yes, gotcha. On off and back on, um, and I, I wanted to do things that not every not every idea translates to being a bodyscape. Not everything uh, is necessarily appropriate to put on the nude bodies. Uh, I've been wanting to show in art the things that I was teaching as a psychology professor. Um, the idea that um, you could see things differently, that different interpretations could both be valid even though they're very different from each other that um to, to speak to the the spiritual dimension and levels of consciousness and these are things that are very hard to show in art but then that he that said art is to make the invisible visible so what i'm trying mm -hmm. to do is to make the invisible like levels of consciousness spirituality um those kind of things to make them visible. Um, I call the series metaphor because obviously I can't make it visible um, in any concrete way, but I can do things that produce 
an image that hopefully the viewer will look at and feel something that brings them to that place where consciousness, spirituality, and such things are, are part of the, the response. So I can show you a few of those pictures. Um, I've got them here on the, the computer. I think that's the best way to show it, the left reaction and trying to show. Yeah. These, this is dollhouse miniatures. Oh. With with objects set there. Um, let's see. And the screen is not a touch screen. And again, these are not done with Photoshop. They're done with with setups, little um, sort of miniature stage setups. So. Alan, we had a question that came in that um, I think could be applied to um, the bodyscapes and this particular work. Um, Jess is asking, uh, the shadowing on the works is really great. Is that from um, precise lighting or just particular lens? Or what? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Um, is that a lighting or do you use a particular lens to achieve it? So on the, the bodyscapes and miniature series. Yeah, the lens I use is uh, well, usually a, a macro lens that involves a close up. Um, the lighting is what makes the shadow. What happens is in the bodyscapes, um, I can show you. the light, the white background, affects oh. off the background and washes over the body. So the result is that the toys are silhouetted. If they weren't, if, you, if the, I light them directly from the front, if the light was, was where the camera is shining right on the toys, you would see that they were plastic and you would lose the, the sense of a real landscape. And also by the light coming back and washing over the body, it picks up the texture. It picks up the, the curves of the body. Like here, the light comes from the back it comes from this direction, so you get part of the body lit here, this the crest of the <laughs> hill, and then the four, the part of the body closest to the camera is dark. So that it's a really simple lighting setup. Um, I've really got usually just two lights on booms hanging over the body, aimed at the background, and then the light washes over the body, reflecting off the background. So it's real simple, really. Okay, so it is truly to answer your question, Jess. It is truly the the light, uh, and and this is also one that can be applied to both uh, series, Alan, um, for both your miniatures and your uh, bodyscape slash body socks. Um, do you like work in color better than light? Um, no, and I, I use color for something very different. Uh, I tried shooting the bodyscapes in color with colored lights and I wasn't really that pleased with that. This new work with the colored body stockings are interesting because the color of the body stocking is part of the important, that's, it's an important part of the image. Um, in general, I think I like black and white best because it's more, there's more feeling, more mood. Mm -hmm. um, but on some of the things like, I, I guess I showed you there was one let me show you over here. Um, there's one. Um, oh, I keep forgetting this computer doesn't have a touch screen, and I'm touching the screen, and nothing is happening. Okay, this is one of the earlier ones. And this was a whole series with the house furniture, and was all done in black and white. Mm -hmm. They. That's, this is still one of my favorite pieces from the whole series, and this is this was back years ago. Um, but the new work, the color I think adds to it. I don't think color would add anything to this picture here. Um, but then on right. some of them, uh, let's see. Like this, you know, I, was I think the color is very important. 
And here right. the lighting is yeah. very different too. There's some light on the background to give it those sort of bar effects of different streaks of light. But if I didn't have any color, if I didn't have any light coming from the front, I don't think this would work. I, I wouldn't want everything to be silhouetted here. And the color definitely adds to the picture. So that's, you know, sometimes color works better. Sometimes black and white works better. Uh, the lighting it depends upon what I'm trying to do, whether I'm trying to, um, you know, silhouette the little figurines or whether the details of the figurines are important. Right. So and then, a... and two, I think it, it's interesting, the words that you were using to describe, you know, with the black and white, it, it, it's a feeling with your black and white photography that you were coloring with the oils, you were also creating a feeling through color, um, but only out of the control that you had over it. That's very fascinating to see how through the different series that you've done, there's like this kind of wash of, of um, uh, I guess there's a common ground between, between all of them in a more conceptual way, I guess. Yeah. I think that's true. I think everything I've done in a way involves looking at something twice or looking at it differently. Mm -hmm. Like the color you look at initially, it may feel like it's just a regular color photograph. And then you go, wait a minute, it doesn't quite feel real. Right. Uh, the picture is real, but the color's not. Mm -hmm. um, the same with the bodyscapes. Initially, you see it as landscape, then you realize it's actually a body and you flip back and forth between these two perceptions. Um, the, the surreal work, the, the newest work is... Um, it actually, it's, it starts surreal because you really can't make any sense out of it if you look at it in terms of reality. Right. Uh, but again, it's playing with reality. That's really what I do. Um, and that comes from my background in psychology, especially when mm -hmm. I got into the psychology of consciousness and Eastern philosophy and meditation. And right. um, now this during this last month and a half where I haven't been able to do much in the way, I haven't done any photography, I've been studying, meditating. I've been um, listening to uh, various lectures and chants and so forth online, uh, like uh, ramdas.org, things of that sort, where there's, there's uh, some, some wonderful material available. And um, I've been trying to use this time in a meaningful way. It reminded me when a friend was um, in jail and I told him, everybody around you is in jail. You're in an ashram. You're in an Eastern monastery. I sent him a tape, taught him to meditate with that tape. And he spent those years learning to meditate and working on himself. And I figure this time of lockdown is sort of like that for me. I feel like it's a, a time of meditation and study. And eventually I'll go back to my shooting studio and at least do the work with the, the miniatures, even if I can't work with a nude body. But um, it's really a time to, um, I want something to be, to come from all this uh, time when I'm locked down. I want it to be a time of growth and, and change and study. So um, that's where I'm at. And well, I, hope, uh, I hope everybody having this time in a, in a useful way. You're, you're breaking a little bit. There we go. You're back on. Can you see what you said? I'm sorry. You're breaking up. I... <laughs> We're breaking up at different times, so it's kind of funny. Um, well, I'm glad to hear that you've been uh, that you've been utilizing this time for self reflection, and I think a lot of artists are evaluating some of um, their uh, kind of what their their daily lives are, and and um, a lot of them, like yourself. Uh, their livelihoods kind of depend on um, on art festivals and things that are now being uh, canceled and such. So it's uh, been a, an interesting time for all of us. Um, Alan, we had one more question that come in that is interesting, and then we'll go ahead and wrap it up for the day. Um, Abby just uh, wrote us a little bit ago, uh, have you worked with plus size models? Uh, models of color, male models, etc. Do you only stick to one type of model usually? And I think that's going to be a fun, okay. I think a fun answer for that. Good question. I've done a lot with male models, and in general, it doesn't sell. 
I really thought between women and gay men, there would be a market for male bodyscapes, but so far it hasn't materialized. I've got a few images of male bodies that sell and that's about it. I've tried over and over and I'm gonna try again. I really feel I need to get a real um, bodybuilder type male model. I've had good models, but maybe not good enough. Um, women of color, that's I, something that is technically difficult because the way the body is photographed, um, you see the, the, it's light against dark, dark against light. Now, if the body were dark, there wouldn't be this light here and there really wouldn't be a picture. I've got to make sure that there's some light so that the figurine is silhouetted against a light area. What I'm gonna to try to do, and which I had planned to do, is to use a black woman and a white woman together, lighting them differently, even though they're next to each other, and maybe I can create some interesting effects. Uh, I haven't tried it yet, but I, it, that's one of the things on my list to do. Um, what else you were asking about? Um, Larger bodies. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's funny, sometimes these bodies are much larger than you think they are. Um, you only see a small portion of the body and it's hard to judge whether the body is, is very, um, you know, and thin and or whether it's, it's a heavy body, you really can't tell. There's, right. there's the, there is the option of using larger people in ways that you can really see that they're large. And also using, people say, well, why don't I do some things with um, um, older wrinkled bodies? I'm not sure how I would approach a model and say, would you like to be the model for the old wrinkled series? Uh, I'm not sure if that would play too well, but um, yes, there's all that stuff is possible. Yeah. Um, I was hoping to get some of that stuff happening this uh, season, but uh, I guess it's going to have to wait a little bit. But they're all, they're all possibilities, and some I've tried, and some I still have to try in the future. Well, I wanted to add in one little tidbit to all of that. Um, Abby, one of my favorite photographs, and it's an older photograph of Alan's that's um, been sold out of the edition, but no longer available. Uh, the only one I, reason why I saw it was in your book that we have a, a sample of at the gallery. Um, but it is one of uh, we have a similar one where the uh, skier is going off the side into uh, the, the small of the back. I noticed um, one, a very simple detail that was just irreplaceable, whole image, and it was the fact that that woman had uh, stretch marks. And the way you had the skiers going through her, um, that area of her body, it looked like the, the tracks made from the skis. And... It was phenomenal how endless it was. Um, I, I can't, it, it took me a second to register, but it's one of the things that I love most about your work is that um, you utilize all body to, uh, to create something uh, fascinating and, and uh, captivating. So um, fantastic, Alan. This has been truly wonderful. Thank you for joining us today or joining me today um, and everybody who tuned in. Um, we really appreciate it. And uh, yes, that is cool. Abby, positivity, 100% love our bodies. Um, we want to celebrate them, right? And that's uh, one of the best things that Alan does. I, I love hearing talk about his work. Um, Chris and Laura have told me story after story of uh, being at the art festival and just listening to you talk to your client and, and the people who come in. They just say it's one of the... Um, one of the most interesting things that they can tune into at the art. So anyway, um, if there's anything else that you want to ask, or if you had anything else you wanted to add, we'll go ahead and wrap it up for the day. We good to go, Alan? Okay. Yeah. This has been good. Thank you. This yeah. Fun. It was really fun. It's good to see you sharing your uh, video at your home with us. Um, I'm going to go ahead and log him off and then I'm going to walk you guys one more time website and everything so you can see how to go about purchasing his work so thanks everybody and thank you alan you the rest of your day okay thank you take care good to see you, you. bye all right so let's go ahead and uh look at this um 
this page again. So everybody who tuned in today, thank you. We were featuring our in-house artist, Alan Tager. Alan is the creator of Bodyscapes, um, whom all of you are familiar with. Uh, today and uh, for the coming weeks, we're offering 20% off all of his paper prints in the Bodyscapes collection. All you need to do is go to our website, which is www.j2gallery.com, and use promo code ALLEN. If you'd like to know how to do that, I'll walk you through it right now. So right up at the top of our website, we have this lovely link. All you have to do is click on that to see who we're featuring at the moment. <laughs> um, so right now we have quite a few artists who have opted to discount some of their work for us. Um, a lot of these artists rely on art festivals for their livelihood. Um, as you know, the art festivals have been canceled um, and, or I should say postponed until next year. Um, we still have a few in play, but a lot of them are reevaluating what they're doing. So know that these artists are doing their best to support themselves from their own studios and through the galleries that represent them. So if you'd like to check out these artists on our website, I always do this, click, oops, not the staff, go ahead and click artists. And from here, you can see everybody that we represent. All of the artists we've been representing through the past 10 years, some new, some old, somewhere in between. So today we're featuring Alan Tager. You can check out his web or bio from here. Click on this little link. And from here, you can check out all of the different pieces we have from Alan. So that's his paper prints here, the hand painted photographs here, and then the aluminum pieces here. These aluminum pieces are what we have in house right now, but you do not have to just rely on that. If you'd like to get one of these pieces on aluminum, you can absolutely do that. Um, Abby, we were talking about male models. Here's my favorite. And I believe Chris and Laura also have this one. This one is quite hilarious. But anyway, all of through the website here, you can check out Alan's work or you can go on to his Instagram, social media, and check it out. He's got some really fun new pieces coming our way. Um, and if you're interested in seeing the, the body stockings, um, let us know. There's some really cool ones. So uh, thanks for tuning in today, everybody. And uh, you'll have a fantastic Monday and a great week. All right. Bye.